I am very excited to interview today's guest. His name is Jose Perez. You have to listen to this pretty impressive resume. In sales for 14 years, 10 years with Quick Reek Company as a sales representative. And then the reason why I got to know him is because he used to work for Charter Communications four years as an account manager. And he enjoys building relationships with customers to create long lasting partnerships. His drive is to inform customers and provide advice that will enhance their business. And during his journey, like all of us, he encountered a lot of challenges, but through the challenges, he learned a great deal about himself, which led to his recent career change, right? During the pandemic, Jose decided to start working on his own business. So he's now a financial planner with New York Life. He's motivated to assist businesses and families with their financial needs. And I wanted to interview him because I really admired, if you can do like a really short um, summary of how you and your wife, just incredible courage at such a young age to um, have your family work full time and decide, oh, in our spare time, we'll just get our, our college degrees. And what led you to, I'm sure, um, I was just talking about how you, you raised your daughters to know, like, you know, how to handle money, how to prepare, and how to save. H how do we do this for children? Well, thank you again uh, for the interview. It's a great opportunity. Um, but, you know, based on, on what you're asking, I think it was important to me to uh, teach them as much as I possibly could uh, especially with uh, the, the fears of life, you know, with everything changing, you kind of want to prepare them as much as possible for the things to come in. I think finance is, is a very important uh, tool for all of us to have. And I think that could be taught early, early on. You know, many households have different types of approaches, you know, they have uh, allowances or uh, different chores, that, and, and they, they actually start teaching us at an early age uh, how to earn money. In our case, we actually went a little bit further out when they were in teenage years and they got their first job. So my first daughter, uh, she was a cashier at a local grocery store. And she, um, she, I asked her, you know, what, what did she think? Um, you know, how, how she planned on using her money she really didn't have many uh, good answers at the time. So I started to encourage her. The first lesson was uh, for her to look at her stuff, her pay stuff, because on the pay stuff, there's a lot of information, like taxes, gross income. And she didn't understand it at first, but once I started to explain it to her, I told her how she can actually use that part of her check uh, for her own uh, benefit. For example, on the savings part, you know, we can, uh, you know, take uh, money from the gross part of it and put it in a, like in an investment, uh, you know, portfolio, maybe like an IRA or something. And it comes automatically out of the gross part. So you never even see it. And it could be a small amount. It doesn't have to be a large amount. It could just be something that is comfortable for you on your check, but you'll never see it. It's already a savings form and it's uh, tax deductible. And it's, uh, it's gonna be growing uh, towards your retirement. But again, it, it's something that comes out automatic and you don't really need to account for it, you know, prior. So you, your check would just come uh, without that without that deduction. So, you know, the little things like that, that I, I started to work with them. Now, of course, they're, they're young and uh, they have a lot of questions and sometimes they may not uh, understand fully, you know, the information that is coming until they actually start to live it. So mm -hmm. as, as the years progress, um, I could see in both of them how they uh, they weren't taking advantage of all the information that I was delivering at the time. Uh, so <laughs> spending their money, uh, not really having a good uh, a, a good reason for it, uh, not budgeting for it. Uh, so I, I would just kind of redirect them and kind of focus on on their on their income again and ask them, you know, what would they do if they had to use that money for uh, living expense. And then I would explain how, you know, how, you know, their mother and, and myself, how we carry the budget, you know, to, to the household expenses, groceries, uh, basic necessities, insurance, gas, you know, things like that. So they still really didn't comprehend until they got a little bit older and had to do it all for themselves. 
And I think now um, my oldest, she's 26 and my youngest 25, and they're kind of independent. They're still semi-independent. They still depend a, a, a lot on us, but, uh, but, they, but they, now you can see how all, all these years of just constant information and, and directing and redirecting, how they're starting to incorporate things uh, in their daily lives. So now they can see, they may not have a good budget like I wish they could, but you know they're not. They don't have families. They don't have all the all the other challenges. They still see themselves as free and independent from a lot of the things that we have uh, as families. You know, created like a mortgage. Um, you know, life insurance. You know, a lot of other things that you know, uh, intricate and complex things that that form our our financial planning to include retirement planning. So they're still thinking, they still cannot see that far ahead, but I'm, I'm still slowly but surely working on them. And hopefully we can, we can achieve those things within the next few years so that they can start already prepping for it. Now that I'm in this industry, I can see, and it can even create tables as to what the difference is uh, in, in the savings part of it between a 25 year old and a 35 year old. And it becomes a great, a great deal uh, amount. Uh, in the overall savings for, for just in those 10 years. And, and, and again, it's the same amount that you'll start saving between, you know, with a 25 year old and a 35 year old versus, you know, now at 35, I have to, I have to double up because mm -hmm. I will never be able to catch up. So it's, it's interesting to, sh to be able to show those tables now uh, so that they can actually see for themselves. And as you mentioned before in our conversation, some, sometimes people say, well, I just don't have the, the, the money to save. And I think it, it really becomes a lifestyle as to how we uh, manage those funds that we are getting, um, you know, weekly or biweekly. Uh, it's just where do you want? I, I suggest that you can take them off before you even get your check. So uh, on the back end, on the gross part of it, if you could just set up an account where it automatically draws um, and, you know, Simple accounts would be like a 401k provided by your, uh, by your company, or you can set up an individual retirement account, uh, little things like that that you can already do on your own and that it, it would automatically withdraw rather than you having to make that uh, actual savings draw or, or, or deposit. Like in the old days where you know we would go to the bank and put money actually in the account and, mm -hmm. and make a deposit. It, it like the Christmas savings accounts, remember? <laughs> Yes. So it doesn't necessarily have to work that way anymore. And, and again, and it's helpful because if they draw from the gross part and not from the actual uh, actual earnings part. So it's tax deductible. So you, you benefit from that in the long run. Um, so those are the little things that can be done. Um, once you see your paycheck, your actual cash value, then it's a little bit difficult for you to... Um, to separate certain funds and say, well, you know, I have to make these payments. And then I do have a little bit left over, but I would like to, uh, you know, go out to eat or mm -hmm. maybe buy myself a little something. And so then now you, now it's harder for you to, uh, to allocate those funds for the savings account or for the retirement account. I think it's a little easier to take them on, on you know, on the front part of it, you know, before you actually see a cash value on, on that check on that deposit. So those are, those are the tips that I, I still continue to, to, to give as much as possible. So what about people? Um, because I don't, I don't have a, a, a company, you know, paycheck. So it's not, it's not like I can take away from the, from the gross. Right. So a lot of us who just earn um, money directly, right. As a solo practitioner or as a, um, you know, LLC, whatever it is, how do we pay ourselves first? I mean, I, it is a discipline. I think we, we learn to do that, but you know how a lot of people, you know, are living paycheck to paycheck. They're paying their mortgages. They're paying, um, you know, just a lot and they don't have, how do you, I mean, do you pay yourself first? You know, we were taught that, but I notice a lot of people just, they don't even have that extra dollar. How do you get well, to that works, point? It works in budget? the same it works in the same manner, in the same fashion. If you're an independent uh, business owner and you're and you're collecting uh, funds, you still have to pay taxes on the, on that cash earned. So same okay. same concept. So while you you're doing your deductions, um, at that point you incorporate a a retirement fund on, 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 on those deductions. Own. 
So you're paying yourself. Yeah, you're paying yourself. You're paying the government and you're paying yourself at the same time. And then again, it becomes a tax-free uh, environment at that point, a tax-free savings amount, uh, account. Um, so yeah, you would, you would want to, just like you handle the taxes, you would handle your, your retirement deduction mm -hmm. first, and then you would, you would get the rest of it. Uh, that would be the best advice because if you actually get the, the funds and then you have the cash in hand, then you, it's harder for you to, 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 again, allocate more funds for savings for retirement. I think if you just incorporate it in the deductions part of it, I think it, it, it all just kind of just goes away first. And then from there, you will have your And you don't have to think your, about it. And you don't have to think about it. Correctly. So out of curiosity, did you give um, your daughter's allowance? How did, um, you know, like before they, they were employed? The allowance uh, came into play when they were more like in middle school age. We created a, uh, a spending account for them so that they could go clothes shopping or school, school supplies shopping. And not necessarily the basic schools, um, uh, the basic supplies, uh, the, the pens and pen, we provided that uh, outside. I think more, it was more like um, the extracurricular. I uh, had a, a, my, my youngest, she was a gymnast. So she wanted to buy all the cutesy things mm -hmm. that uh, she needed to use for practice. Um, my oldest, she was a band geek. So she wanted to buy all the extra, you know, cutesy things that, that she needed for practice, you know, for all her practices. So I think that those are the things that I, that I refer to as supplies for school. Um, so we created a, a, a spending fund for them. And it was interesting to watch how they were both different. One um, would buy a few, you know, less things with the, with the amount that we provided. And the other one would just go, you know, value shopping. And so she would buy <laughs> tons more than the other uh and we'd always uh point that out and just use it as a learning tool it, we would we, my oldest she was the one that she would just buy two things with the same amount and mm -hmm. i would say girl i mean how are you you know how is this going to work for you and, and then my youngest jasmine she she would buy many many things and she would just go value shopping she would try to make it, it stretch as much as possible um, needless to say, you know, she's the one that's still doing much better <laughs> because she's carried that along <laughs> all these years. Um, but, uh, but that's how, that's how, uh, I see, you know, the lesson being taught, but I really never gave them like an allowance, uh, for daily chores. I think all of that was just kind of an expectation as part of our family uh, unit that we, that we had mm -hmm, created mm -hmm. for ourselves. I've read that, that you, the, otherwise they'll think that, um, you know, there, there's no, like, this is a family obligation or this is part of your responsibility, right? If you get paid. So there's always a controversy on that. What made you change careers? Um, so love sales. I truly love sales. I, I think that there's a value in, in us being out there in front of, in front of a product, especially if we believe in the product, um, informing the customer and, um, giving them the best possible advice so they could be, you know, they could be informed properly and make the best decision for themselves. So I love sales. Um, in th this career path, it's not necessarily sales. It's more instruction and empowering people to mm -hmm. become better in their financial goals and allowing them to become independent and free from, uh, from you know, from expenses and all the other challenges that we have as a financial and what, one of the things that kills us the most is inflation. As we can mm -hmm. see how that affects us, our, our affects our budgets and not just us at, at the household level, but even businesses get affected by that as well. So if we can find ways to become inflation proof, that would be amazing. So we, that would be the secret to just find a way how we can make this work individually and be successful at the end and not, uh, you know, not lose, we try to always win. So the, the advice uh, would be for others to acknowledge what, they, what their goals are and then. Oh gosh, Jose, we just lost you. You're frozen. I don't know what happened. Can you hear me? Are you there? Yes. Okay. 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 My, for some reason, yeah. My, for some reason, you're um, internet. Um. So I'm sorry. You were right in the middle of um. I just lost like the last twenty seconds or so. 
So I was saying that uh, we we want to uh, form a financial plan that's kind of uh, some type of fail proof because of inflation and other yeah. things that uh, changing factors that that uh, that we that we encounter throughout our life. Um, one of the things that, that I, I'm learning uh, is that it doesn't have to be set in stone. So we can create a plan today, and if something changes tomorrow, we can tweak it to to improve it and make it you know work for you moving forward. And, and so it's a it's a yearly uh, revisitation, and and sooner if need be, if t- if things do change for families, uh, you can actually make those changes uh, you know in real time. But if, if you feel like nothing has changed in, in the course of a year, it's always wise to revisit your plan and see if there's anything that can be better for you mm-hmm. for the future. So it's, that's, that's a new thing in the industry. Uh, once upon a time, when I bought my, my first insurance plan 20 years ago, uh, my insurance agent stole it and then just walked away. Really never had any much more contact other than that. But now uh, the industry is taking it a little bit further where they can uh, do annual reviews and make sure that you are on the right path. And if anything has changed, we can improve it. Always looking to make it better. Always, always looking to make it better. And that's, that's what's encouraging to me that I could help or be part of somebody's uh, financial goal and, and allow them to be successful in the future. Well, I think it's, a, it's intimidating for a lot of us because we, we don't want to make the wrong decision or we don't know where to start and who to trust. So I mean, how do people find you? Because it sounds like I love it that it's your passion, you know, and it's um, something that every one of us can benefit from. Right. No matter how little or how much money. I mean, like you said, I like how you said that inflation proof. I never if you, you don't even realize that that's even a possibility to like revisit and to get educated. So do you sit down and you um, look through like what their, their savings, what their, maybe like their, their spending patterns or what their, oh, you were mentioning goals, right? What their ultimate financial goal would be. Correct. So the, the, it's a, it's a, um, it's a consultation based on your, your goals, your lifestyle, what you, what you wish to, obtain and again this can change but at least we can have a starting path a starting point and then from there we can we can grow on it it's always positive to grow and and be better at it Um, but you at least want to start it you don't want to find yourself a year from now knowing that you could have already been on the path and you've lost out so and it doesn't take much Uh, it's just a consultation um, you know, it could be 30 minutes to 45 minute consultation, just going through the, the you know, the questionnaire and it's basically, mm-hmm. uh, answering your goals, your, your overall financial plan. And then from there, we can plug in some numbers and we can, uh, do a case bill. So we can do possible solutions, uh, for the customer so that they can choose them themselves. So I'm not selling anything other than your dreams, your, your dreams. We're gonna try to achieve your goals and your dreams. Uh, and then from there, we do have a lot of options. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's a beautiful world and a beautiful industry. I really am motivated to, to speak with as many people as I possibly can. And do you think, you know, cause a lot of us are like, oh, I'm in my fifties, I'm in my sixties and it's too late. What do you say to that? It's never too late. It's never too late. I think that um, we can start at any time. Uh, the earlier you start, I mean, the more, the, more you, the, the more opportunity you have to grow onto your dreams. The later you start, you just have to work a little bit uh, different, wiser now. now. When we get older, we work wiser. So now we have more tools at our disposal that we didn't have when we were younger. So we can make those tools work. And that's that's how it works. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that you uh, you lost. I think that now we have an opportunity to make what you have work for you. Do you think um, the trend is that younger people, like you know, right out of college and their twenties, are they recognizing the importance of seeing a financial planner and working with one, or do you think it needs to still be, you know, something that needs to be taught? Because many of us might not, you know, you're just so busy going, going, going especially when you're young, do you think that the younger generation is realizing the importance of financial planning? I think the younger generation is still uh, scared as they're learning uh, how things are going to come together. So fear is what, what holds them back a little bit. So yeah, teaching the, the, the younger generation that it doesn't take much 
that very it, it, a few a few little things and that's the important part because the younger you are the less money you you really require because you have a longer time to build on it so you know back to what you had said when you get to an older age you you are going to require a little bit more money but you have accumulated some assets over the over the years and it may be you know big or small but whatever that is that or not we can make it work for your lifestyle at that point in a younger generation, a dollar means a lot, you know, 30 years from now. So if you start with at least a dollar, I mean, you can see it grow, you know, in 30, 40, and 50 years, and you could see how that dollar can work for you. Um, and, and, and it'd be just as simple as that. Now, we can take it a step further, and we can actually put in, in a dollar amount of what your future, what you would like your future to look like. And then we can put real, we can plug in real numbers into that. So it's it's fairly simple. But I think the younger generation still uh, has a lot of fears, a lot of self confident uh, issues. So and then they they tend to feel um, maybe threatened or or just not confident enough to approach or have that that conversation with a financial planner. And believe me, it it it's nothing. There's really no charge. There's actually no charge. It's just educating, um, you know, the public and your friends and family, because that's how it works. You, you just kind of approach your friends and family first, and then you grow on it uh, through um, through referrals. So mm -hmm. it, it, it really, referrals uh, definitely help. Well, don't you think trusting too? Because a lot of people, you know, probably hear horror stories. And so it really takes someone to trust, to share what you have and, you know, share your goals and to trust that that person's going to have your best interest. You know, how you said 20 years ago, but they didn't really do much um, regarding insurance, right? They probably just sold it and then that's what you did. But now it sounds like more care and thought and uh, a relationship is even formed where you can rely on a financial planner. You know, before it was just buy your life insurance and that's it. So how can people reach you? So um, let's see, let me try to pull up my card real quick and I'll let you know here. But Did you yeah, set up like uh, a, um, a website or like a... I'm still best. in the early state. Is yeah, it probably just your I, phone I number e or email? Yes, correct. Right. So... Um, Go here. So I can inc I can number. include it. Okay. When I when I um so you can just say it and then I think I have um so you're putting your phone number out too. Yes, correct. That your yeah. So my my cell phone is a two one zero seven one zero five three zero three and then my email is J R. Perez, P-E-R-E-Z, at ft.newyorklife.com. And then yeah, you can just send me an email. And I think on the trust issue, like you had mentioned, I think that's why referrals are important because once you start working with someone, uh, they can really uh, see the value in it and then create that bond and that relationship. So then it's easier to, for you to refer somebody that you love and care for, that they can find value in it as well. And then we can we can create that relationship once uh, we're oh, introduced. Yeah. yeah, and then from there, you know, if it's if it's a right fit, um, then we can proceed. I think it, it is important to actually to, to have that one on one meeting with with a person. It, it can be sensitive, but I I tell you, um, it's just numbers. Don't be afraid. It, it's it's they're just numbers that that uh that are out there. And then your goals and your dreams are going to be yours uh, for you to have, I'm just a facilitator. I just uh, present the information and, and then you can, you can work on your goals and dreams. It's just as simple as that. It's really not that complicated and it doesn't have to be that terrifying. It, we're you just think plug sometimes in numbers. though, people feel that they're judging themselves like, oh my gosh, I don't have that much. Or then they look at debt and maybe it does feel, that's probably why it feels scary because you're putting yourself out there. And if you're not where you think you should be, Right. No. I, I, well, OK. So, yeah, that is definitely what holds people back for sure is their fear. And like I mentioned with the, even with the younger person, it's you have that fear and you have that hard judgment that uh, maybe I should be somewhere. 
Well, it's never going to change unless we, we work on it today. Exactly. That's, and, and really, again, it's just numbers, and these are, are your ideas. Oh my gosh, Jose, we lost you again. Can you just say that last part? It sounded like a really important part. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Wait, what was the last it part? Let's out. end it with that. It sounded like something that um, would probably help people feel more comfortable reaching out because I think a lot of us think, oh no, now he's going to know, like, you know, you just, oh. it, it is a vulnerable uh, uh, position to be it in to share. It it can be, but I, again, I, I'm, I would just be a tool, a resource, a facilitator for you to um, put your dreams in motion. That would be that would be the extent of that. It is very private and confidential. Um, but again, I, for me, it is more about educating mm -hmm. and providing that that pathway for someone to start on that on that path of realizing their their future dreams and goals. Um, it, it would be, you know, again, a, a great opportunity for at least to be educated and see how this can transform to something different. Well, I love how you put that dream, put, set your dreams in motion, because I think a lot of us like one day, one day, um, Jose helped my, my husband with his, well, not really decision, like taking action. I think all of us mean to, you know, all of us mean to. And then before you know it, 10 years pass by and then you think, oh, one day. And then one day sometimes never happens. Right. So please contact Jose. I think all of us, um, we know deep down what we should do, but we just put it on another day. And then don't you think years go by and then we don't, um, we're basically not only material, um, putting our dreams in motion, but if you have children, is that another big thing so that you know that when you're gone, that your children will also have um, something, right? That's correct. That is correct. Well, thank you so much, Jose. I really appreciate this. I wish you luck when you um, embark on your adventure. Let's keep in touch because I think I have a few people, um, family members especially, that we need to, we just need to do this and we need to make it a priority because... You know, we never know how much time we have, right? And so- um, That is correct. You know, it just needs to be a priority. Thank you so much well, and yeah. take care. Thank you. And I will see you soon. Bye. Have Bye. a good day.